Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. So in this video, I wanna talk about the truth about blockchain, all right? Because blockchain can be a very confusing place with a lot of misinformation, and I wanna set the record straight in this video, all right? So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and click the like button down below. And as always, if you wanna learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's talk about the truth about blockchain. And before I do that, you know, this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. So you have to take it that way. I just want to make that disclaimer up front, right? So one of the reasons I think people get really confused about blockchain is because it's such a new technology, right? It's still very young. These are the early days. And people try to compare it to other more mature technologies, right? As they are today, all right? So what I think is better to do is actually compare blockchain to other technologies and other innovations at the early phases of their life cycles to see the parallel to help us understand blockchain better, all right? So some people get into blockchain and say, hey, this looks, looks sketchy, right? This doesn't look like the kind of place I want to be. This is just for criminals, money launderers, you know, nefarious activity in general, right? And there's a lot of that going on in blockchain. I'll be 100% honest with you. But if you look at the earlier days of other technology and other innovations, that was also the case, right? And it's still the case for some of these big uh, technology. So I'll explain what I mean by that, right? So a lot of people get into blockchain and say, this is just for criminals, right? Criminals are just using cryptocurrency so that they can like launder money and, you know, run black markets and things like that. And that does happen. You know, that's, I think that was one of the big reasons that cryptocurrency took off initially, right? But if you look at the internet, one of the big reasons the internet took off, you know, at all uh, among consumers was adult content. Right. And that's one of the big things that keeps the Internet going today. I, I can't remember what the stat is, but it's some ridiculous amount of traffic on the Web right now. Web searches, I believe, is for adult content. Right. So something a lot of people don't want to talk about. But that's the truth about how people actually use the Internet. Right. So if you start talking about cryptocurrency and blockchain is like it's only for criminals, only for underground activity, like that's probably never going to go away, I don't think. But that doesn't mean that other more legitimate use cases aren't being used right, right now with blockchains and also more in the future. And another big criticism is that people say cryptocurrency prices are so heavily manipulated, right? Uh, so what I want to highlight there is that there's been a lot of price manipulation in the stock market over the years, especially in the early days. And that doesn't mean that it can't be used for more legitimate purposes over the long haul. And another big criticism is that, you know, blockchain apps and stuff like that just look sketchy, right? You have to go install these Chrome extensions or something like that in order to use one. And the UX is kind of weird and slow. And that can be true. But compare that to the other, you know, websites that were there in the early days of the internet, right? Can you remember like GeoCities or something? Stuff like that. These websites were basically pointless um, and people couldn't really figure out what to do with them yet. And the problem with blockchain right now is people had the internet for a long time, so they've gotten used to good user experience, right? And they have that to compare it to versus, you know, in the olden days when we first had websites coming out, we didn't have anything to compare it to. And so a website in general was awesome and it was novel. And even if it didn't have much of a purpose, like we were still fascinated by it and wanted to use it. All right, so another thing I want to highlight is that blockchain, you know, it's a new tech and it's also very speculative. Like I would could it categorize blockchain as a speculative space all around from cryptocurrency prices to like, what are we going to do with blockchains in the first place, right? Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. There's lots of stuff we can do with blockchains. People are using them right now, but we're also trying to figure out, you know, what can we do at all with blockchains? What's the total possibility? So I want to talk about that. That's the kind of speculation I'm talking about. So let me, let me clarify that. So the biggest use cases for blockchain right now, like what are people actually doing with them like a lot, are financial speculation, store of value, gambling, and decentralized finance, right? A lot of these have to just do with cryptocurrency and how you can use it, right? There's lots of other use cases that uh, people are going after and companies are putting a lot of money into. I'll talk about that in a second. But that's like what people are fleeing other platforms and flocking to blockchain to do because they can't do it somewhere else. Like, uh, for example, with, uh, you know, financial speculation, they think they can get bigger returns on Bitcoin or these cryptocurrencies rather than maybe the stock market or Forex or whatever. Um, so there, you see people going in and, and buying crypto uh, or, you know, store value, same sort of deal. I think you can get better returns over the long run by just holding cryptocurrencies uh, for gambling. In particular, there's a lot of countries where gambling is completely illegal, but they can do it on the blockchain, you know, sort of off. Uh, under the radar and they don't get in trouble for it if they don't get caught, right? 
Um, and also decentralized finance is a really cool, I would say, emerging use case for blockchain where people are able to take crypto assets and do things that they could do with other traditional assets like uh, get loans, um, invest them and get guaranteed returns or better returns than they would somewhere else. There's all, all kinds of cool possibilities with decentralized finance. And also, as far as the speculation goes, like I want to be clear about this. Like there are a lot of big companies who are trying to get in this space and you know extend this list of use cases and try to pioneer it. Right? They want to see how far we can take blockchain. We can actually do with it. Right? And because these big companies are getting into it, it actually creates an entire economy. Uh, an ecosystem for blockchain, right? They're the ones that are bearing the risk of uh, solving these kinds of problems. They're putting up their capital. We're talking about, you know, gobs and gobs and gobs of money. And this is creating jobs. It basically means that people are able to get into crypto, get into blockchain, have jobs, and get into a really interesting space, right? So what are some examples? Like uh, Microsoft, you know, they're into blockchain with their blockchain services. Amazon has their, you know, ledger service. Google has BigQuery. They've been paying attention to projects like Chainlink, um, the decentralized Oracle service. You know, Facebook is trying to launch Libra. So this is a really great sign that <laughs> these companies think that blockchain is the real deal and has uh, a huge benefit over the long run in the tech space, right? So they're getting in here. Competition is actually a really good sign because it means that these big companies see the upside. Like I said, they bear all the financial risk of hiring people and trying to solve these problems and paying them salaries and, and you know, compensating them for figuring these problems out. So that's one reason I actually really like blockchain is because you get to uh, figure out the problems people haven't solved yet. And that's what you spend your time doing rather than like, you know, some other developer job where you're basically just trying to get this web page to work like every other web page you've done a thousand times, right? With blockchain, you get to go in there and uh, solve new problems that people People haven't done yet. So another thing people get really frustrated with in blockchain is they sit around and say, you know, when is mass adoption going to happen? All right. So the problem with this is they don't ever define what that means. Like, what does mass adoption look like? Nobody has a really good metric for this, at least that I've heard. If you if you've heard of one, leave a comment down in the comment section below. So like in one sense, to me, like blockchain has already happened, right? There's a huge volume of transactions every single day on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other major blockchains, right? You can go to any block explorer and verify this. So in one sense, like it's kind of already happened. In another sense, uh, some people would say like mass adoption looks like you know, my grandma having decentralized apps installed on her smartphone, right? So it's like, well, you know, it's, I don't know if that's a fair way to measure it, right? So let me give you an example. Uh, has your grandma ever used BitTorrent? I don't know that she has, right? But did BitTorrent like completely change the entertainment industry forever? Yeah, it did. But it didn't take your grandma using it in order for it to do that, right? And it paved the uh, trail for all these other ways that we consume media and all that kind of stuff. Uh, change people's perception of digital media. Uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. It was crazy game changer, and it was a huge groundbreaking technology, right? So I don't think that's the best way to measure like blockchain adoption. We don't necessarily know exactly what it's going to look like in the future, but I think the upside is really good. So I was talking to one of my mentors the other day, and he put it this way. He said like, okay, so think about really far out in the future, like let's say 50 years, all right? In 50 years, do you think that we will commonly use digital currencies for exchange, like monetary exchange, goods and services? I pay you, you pay me. I think so, right? It's it's the best way to do it. Uh, and that's such a long timeline, right? So let's back it way up. Um, it could be way sooner than that, but I don't want to put a specific timeline. I want to project really far in the future to try to just like kind of, you know, think about it uh, in a really reasonable way. So think about 50 years ago where we were with technology. Like think about where we were with the internet 50 years ago, right? There's so much can happen. In a lot of sense, uh, technology speeding up like exponentially. So this could happen really, really, really fast. And he was also talking about like how he remembers buying little M&Ms uh, packages out of a vending machine and seeing like a website on the back of an M&M's package and saying like, why is this here? Like who cares about a website on an M&M's package, right? But think about how common that is these days. Like when was the last time you went to, you know, Coca-Cola's website or Coca-Cola's Twitter or Instagram, right? But it matters. Like they, they spend money on this kind of stuff. It's part of their marketing, right? So who could have projected that 
uh, you know, 20 plus years ago. Imagine 50 years ago, right? I think we're in a similar spot with blockchain. And I think blockchain really is the best way to store value, digital records, contracts, all that kind of stuff that can be modeled on the blockchain. I think we're headed that direction, right? And even if we don't uh, end up using that, you know, at scale, at mass adoption, in the very least, digital currencies have already happened, and I think the use cases for digital currencies and you know digital finance are gonna keep growing and gonna keep being adopted more and more and more. And like I said, you don't have to wait for quote unquote mass adoption to happen for there to be a lot of opportunity in blockchain. Big companies are in this space, they're hiring people, it's created an entire economy and an industry around blockchain that is thriving and growing, all right? So that's just my take on it. All right, guys. So that is the truth about blockchain. That's my opinion. This is not financial advice. That's just what I see uh, on this side of things and where I see this whole thing headed. So if y'all like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And as always, if you want to learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.